Hello, welcome to a very special episode of Four Times the Podcast. Hope everybody's recovered from their hangovers or that they're still absolutely steaming or just about to head back out like myself. Yesterday, massive game. We played the Rangers at Celtic Park. Hadn't beat them for two ye- over two years. Put in a lot of brutally embarrassing performances against them. And tonight, or last night, we restored a lot of pride and faith and Daddy, I, 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 I would just ramble on to start like you coming right away. How good was that? It was amazing, Tony. It was every bit of what we thought we were getting under Postacoglu um, when he came in and talk, talked about how he was playing Fitba. Uh, first 45 minutes are as good as we've played in an awful long time and we've played well this season. And uh, It was just brilliant. I thought just the crowd before the game, just the atmosphere when the players came out, when the team went into the huddle and it was under the lights, you could just it just looked phenomenal. Crowd, just every moment, you know, booing them at the start of the game because they took kick off. But every time they get the ball for the first twenty minutes, they just get hounded up the crowd. It was it was phenomenal. It was a great and do you know what? It felt like such a big night for us. Um before the game. It felt like a big massive test. Put the, the 11 boys that started as the 11 that we'd all played. The captain coming back in wearing these, um, I don't know what, what you call it, a burlesque mask or something. I don't know it, but I tell you what, what, what came up meant for him, but you know, you can't question Cal McGregor's loyalty and commitment to Celtic now. It looks very much like he's going to be a one club man through his whole career, which is phenomenal. I know he did a lone spell at Notts County, but whatever. Um, but I just, for the first whistle, just set about them. Tried to get the ball down at all times and play fit, but, you know, we were close before we actually scored a great goal. Um, I think it hit, uh, I don't know who it hit in the way through, but it hit somebody and then thought that we kept, know that we sat half in the first half, we kept going, but you're getting to that point where a couple of games this season we thought, oh, we don't get a second goal and we struggle, but I thought Rangers had the ball in a lot of good areas, but they just completely chucked it in the first half at Barisic in particular. He just wanted no part of Juranovic and Abada. Um, I just thought he just summed Rangers up. I counted it for three times in the first half where it won nothing. He'd had the ball and twice he'd Kent like, in acres of space down the left and this, the other time he had like 40 yards of space to his cell. And every time he cut back, the one, he, the, one of the ones obviously cut back is the one that people have been watching all day, McGregor, calling him a shite bag for no taking them on. But that just summed them up in that first half. And you're just thinking, let's get a second. Like, he's a second for half time. He can kind of ease the nerves a wee bit. The second comes, and the second's as good a goal as we've scored all season. We might not top that. It was just a sweet move that, that what actually, the Yaki Marcus one, who we'll talk about him obviously later, he was, I thought he was brilliant, but the one where he did shot McGregor tipped out of the bar, that was a great move. If that had went in, right, we'd have been talking about that goal for, for a long time because the one touch play between Juranovic and Abada to Yaki Marcus was brilliant, right? But see the second goal, O'Reilly, who was along with Juranovic, was heading shoulders above anything else, just the way he makes space for other players, the way he passes the ball automatically takes players out of the game. It, it was just brilliant. And then, what can you say? I mean, the second the, the second goal's for Romilly. He's got hardly any back lift. And he's curled it around Goldson and by McGregor into, you know, where McGregor is. He's put it into the near post. And then you're thinking, great, we've got that second goal. Let's just get it off time at 2 And then, you know, 90 seconds later, it's free. Don't know what the Rangers defence is up to. But see, you were at the game, obviously, I watched it at the telly, but see the moment when you see the cross come in, like on the telly, and you just see, you know how bad is getting it, right? Because he's the only person interested in getting the ball. And a great finish, free nothing. And you, I mean, I was on my knees in the flat going fucking tonto. And it was like, it just felt like it was coming. And then the second top, I, I thought the second top went exactly how I thought it was going to go. Just, I thought, do you know what, we've put our stall out, we're freeing it up, we don't need to get in daft, we don't need to keep pushing, obviously you want to push on and score five and six against them, but we've not beat them in our two year, you know, so let's just take care of the three points, it means more to us to beat them free nothing um, and go tap the league than it, than it would, you know, maybe beating them five, but pushing on and a couple of players maybe getting an injury or something, so 
you know, the, the game was done. They came out, enjoyed a wee bit more of the ball, but hard, I don't think, it would a save to make. And, you know, we looked quite threatening in the second half and all, but just, like, just a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable night, Tony, and I'm sure you, you used for that, I'm sure it's one you'll never forget. Ah, uh, it was... Uh... It was needed, as I say. I mean, there was players for Rangers that had performed at extremely well against us. Barris, it's been one. Ryan Ken. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few others. Tavadier, who had kind of stepped up in the last season. But I thought we hunted them all the park. I'd like to give them a minute. The fans were unbelievable. The displays for both sections of the crowd were, were fantastic. Really funny as well. So the Green Brigade one for the team coming out was so well thought. We began swinging a bat at them. Um, but no, I just thought it was a real, really what Posta Coglu's been all about is about this unity. And you could see the unity with the players and the crowd, the ball boys. Um, and it is, we just, I mean, we didn't give them a second to breathe and we expected that. And there was that hope if we can get the, I think the early goal spooked him. It completely spooked him. Uh, as you say, it's Barisic, who... At one point, was probably one of their best players. He just he fell he fell apart. That guy, he didn't he didn't want to be there. Abada was going past him for fun. The third goal, he's sleeping. He's away for a sit down, and Abada's creeped in to make it um to make it three 0 before half time. But for me, I think that's the way we should treat these games. You need to, it's very kind of cliche, but you need to win your battles individually. And I thought there was one where the ball bounced. I think it was three of their players went for it, and right, uh, O'Reilly went for it. He he came out best. Um, Hattati was exceptional. Um, first goal, I think McGregor should save it. Second goal, he curls it magnificently. The build up to that is just pure brilliant football. Um, and then he, he he sets up the cross for. For Juranovic in this right in a great area and, and Jurano, eh, no Juranovic, sorry, I'm bad to finish as well. Um I thought Greg Taylor was excellent. I know Danny wants me to, to apologise. I like, uh, I had a go at Taylor after one of the games, but I thought he was outstanding, uh, defensively and offensively. Man of the match for me was Juranovic. I mean Rolls Royce. Um for the money we paid for him, I thought he was exceptional. I thought there was times he was defending Kent so well, who has been a a major danger man for them in uh, in recent years. Um, Callum McGregor, I just listened to something there. I think he's got two breaks in his face, um, but the man did he play. I think that's a captain, captain leading the way. And I thought he was really good as well. Uh, O'Reilly, massive fan of him. I think uh, the way he settled in for MK Dons, who we all do respect, or nowhere near the size of us, nowhere near the expectation to come into these kind of that atmosphere and perform at such a good level. Extremely impressive. Um, Joe Hart, see, sometimes I wish he would calm down. Look, I love Joe Hart. I think he's been excellent. But even at 3-0, when they had all the ball, we still just desperate to get the ball moving. Um, which is, I guess, it's credit to the way Ange wants to play the game. But sometimes I wish he would just chill out and waste a couple of seconds. I thought Giamakis had a good game. I thought he, he was unlucky not to score with that header we powered above... Um, Shirley Bassey, so um, no, there's, there's not a player you can fault. Um, when Maida came on, I thought he pressed really well and put them under pressure. He, he's obviously a lot quicker than, than Giamakis. Um, Darren, what was your thoughts on the game? How did you enjoy it? Hey, I thought it was absolutely exceptional, Tony, I think. The whole build-up, I know we don't have too many uh, games against him during midweek. I think the last one was when Joel Edley put his top of the league. But uh, I, I'm quite glad of that now because the, the build-up to it was just... I, I don't think I've ever been as nervous and excited about a game in my life. And you've seen it, like, I think every Celtic boozer in the town and the Gallagher and uh, the Brazen he and that, everywhere was absolutely packed. And everybody was just bang up for it. And that's all well and good, but you need the team to be as well and I think when the team was announced like for me for me that was when the game was won I, I was when I was speaking to people all day I was like if Callum McGregor plays I think he's able to win and it's not just because of the technical ability and the quality of player that Callum McGregor is which is exceptional but you had seen their signing on Monday night and people were going on about how that was going to be a, a decisive factor and it was going to uh, take them towards the league and then 
I think as soon as he ruled himself out, and this was one of their most important games this season, of course, and he ruled himself instantly out of it. But we had a guy like Cal McGregor who, as you said, has multiple breaks in his face, so he's literally playing with a broken face, who has done everything he can and got himself ready for this game. And then Dyson Maeda on the bench, who has literally travelled halfway across the world just so he can be a part of it, I think. I think when you've seen that, you've just seen how committed this team are to Ange, how they'll, they'll run through a brick wall for them, they'll, they'll do it, and they're so bought in to what we want to do. And as has been mentioned, the crowd was just so bang up for it. And the warm-up uh, outside Celtic Park, like on the way around, walking up through the Marnock train station, like wherever you were, there was just a, a massive buzz about the place. And like when you start, it's just a, the absolute dream start. Celtic just starts so well. And the goal, Rio Hitati, like we spoke about it before, how how good must Japan's midfield be that he's not even getting in squad yet. But the way he takes the first goal is just so good because it comes to him on his left foot. But he has, he has about maybe one to two seconds before he has to react. And he manages to shift his full body and put it on his right foot and get the shot away. And there might have been a wee deflection on it, but... It's it's the intelligence of him that's got him in that position and and all Rangers were I don't know what they were claiming for. I think Bassey was doing cause he ran in a rebel, but I don't know how that's Celtic's fault. And although I think Bobby Madden was trying to get a wee word to give him a reason to disallow it, which was quite quite amazing considering how long it went since the goal had went in. Uh, and Celtic uh, Alan McGregor's took some uh, criticism for the Rangers fans for his last few games and last night, but I know he, I know he rightly got a lot of stick off Celtic fans. But if it isn't for him, we even before Hattie's setting goal, we are three or four up. Like Jack and Marcus, as you mentioned, he he led the line superbly and didn't get his goal, which was unfortunate. But it wasn't for lack of trying. I think he had three attempts on target in the first half and a penalty shout as well, which I've not seen back. I don't think I think it would have been soft if we got it, but he's still getting himself in that position and. Uh, like the the one that started with Juranovic Ira, and I think it's a bad it's in that Jack Marcus has one tipped over that look, we are a team that scored exceptional goals this season like our goal of the season competition is going to be incredible but that would have been by far and away the best one if it had went in and the fact that Celtic we, they couldn't live with us in the first half and I know a lot of teams have never been able to but for Celtic to keep up that intensity was just it was fantastic, and the the second goal we had is just super. Like, it's even better than the first. It's it's his confidence, his intelligence to put it there. Like that's a positioning goal that McGregor probably shouldn't be getting beat at, but Hattati sees the gap and Disney Disney think twice about putting it there. And even at two 0 like Celtic players were probably thinking, oh, I that. Well, I know I was I was like that. It's comfortable get to half time and then come out again, but. Celtic just didn't relent. Like I know one thing I've criticised Celtic for over the years is their throw-ins. Just think we're pretty wasteful with them. But when Taylor takes that throw-in to Hattati and he uh, puts it down near the corner flag, like Hattati's ball and is exceptional. And Barisic is already like he's seen what's happening about five seconds before anybody else is because he's he's just totally given up on the ball. And it, it's the mark he had this season that he's just he's his instinct for goal is unbelievable for a nineteen-year-old. He's scored and every competition we've played in this season and now he scored in one of our biggest games of the season and he, he completely deserved it. Like he I, I thought he was superb again. He's another one just, like doesn't matter what age he is, like he just every game he stands up and he's counted and I know some fans took a while to get round to him but it's it's got to be beyond that now. He he is right up there for our player of the season, never mind John player of the season because he is just like he's epitomised everything that Ange has wanted. And I second half I, I completely agree. It was just about no no day night and stupid, no giving away a silly goal and inviting them onto us. And I know Rangers had a lot more of the ball in the second half than they did the first, but apart from what Ryan Jack's pop shot from about thirty yards that hit the bar, they Joe Hart didn't have much to do and even what he did have to do, he'd done with relative ease. And I think that's massive credit to the defence, like Greg Taylor, as you mentioned, I, I long, I've long been a fan of him. And I, when he was up against the Al, I know a lot of people thought he would struggle, but I thought he handled him so well. And 
Jota even gave him a lot of backup on that side as well. And the centre half, Carter Vickers is just exceptional. He is just as important as Jota in terms of getting a loan sign and signed up because I, I thought he was imperious last night. And Starfield had a few where he gave away sloppy possession, but his, his teammates backed him up and got him out of the trouble yeah, a few times. Uh, and as much as I've harped on about the other guys, I thought that Josip Juranovic just, he he was absolutely phenomenal last night. He was He's bordering on world class with that performance. That every sort of danger that came down that side, he had that extra burst of pace or he'd already read where it was going. And I, I don't want to bring the, the tone down too much, but I felt for the last 30, 35 minutes that he was playing that right-hand side of his name because James Forrest came on and pretty much... A carbon copy of what he done in December 2019, or I 2019 when uh, Rangers beat us 2 1 in the league. He, he hung Jeremy Frimpong out to dry that day, but no gain him any backup. And he, I, I felt he'd done the same to Juranovic last night, but the difference is that Juranovic is such a top, top player that he was able to handle it. And I, I was just delighted for a team that's obviously top of the league. Nothing's won yet in terms of the league, but. It gives us a massive platform to build on and all the momentum's with us now. And <laughs> Ange is just, he's been so consistent in his message about what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And a lot of people, when he uh, heard previews about what Ange was going to bring, says, oh, it might take a year or two to actually get his methods. But last night, that was a team that nine out of the 11 that started were Ange Postacoglu signings. The only two that were never Greg Taylor and Callum McGregor. And we played like an Ange Postacoglu team and he deserves so much credit because he, he let's say, we all know what Celtic means and what it means to us and what it will always mean to us and where we expect Celtic to be, but he picked Celtic up off the floor after the mess he had been left with and we were promised a sort of structure change and the only thing that really did change was the manager and thankfully for us we've picked an exceptional manager and an exceptional person who's led us to the top of the league, Tony. I got to speak to him at the press conference on Monday. It was a, a complete pleasure. Uh, I spoke to him before, obviously, he's unveiling, and I thought at the time he made something about him. I thought he spoke really well. Again, again on Monday, elaborates really well. I think he, he enjoys speaking to the fans, and uh, we enjoy speaking to him. Uh, the, the answer he gave about leadership was really, really interesting, and um, it, was, it was great to speak to him. And... I think that win, that win was for us last night. Us that have listened to one lot of shite for the last year and a half, I think that was really, that was one for the fans, but he can be delighted we sell. Um, it's all been said, come in for a different country, they didn't know anybody, yada, yada, yada. It's that, but I think you touched on it there, there is such a, a long way to go, and it's really just now, we've, we've had the celebrations, we can have a laugh for another couple of days, but we need to go to Fur Park and win. Um one way or the other uh, on Sunday. Uh, Andy, I think you just finished your celebrations about an hour ago. How are you feeling? And uh, what was your thoughts on last night? Well, worth it. Um, I thought, see, just on um, what Dan was talking about, Danny mentioned it as well. I said it to you in, in the morning. I obviously started pretty early. I took a day off uh, yesterday for the game. And, and I was out in the town, uh, in, the, in the pubs, and just that way you just get you just get a right buzz about the place. Everybody's just up for it, and a lot of boys were off the island, and it was just I said, I don't, I don't know who the fuck was at work yesterday. The workforce must have been doing about fifty percent, um, but uh, there was just a right good buzz about the place. Um, and then obviously when the team lineup comes out, and you have McGregor starting, and Maida's in the bench, it's, it was a right good feeling about yesterday. Um, you can get into the game. Like, I was, like you say, we all predicted Celtic would win, as you would expect. But but I was quite confident. Um, I, I don't know where I had. I didn't think we were going to go and stick stick five by them and do them again. But I was I was confident of winning the game. I was confident of what I'd seen. Um, for Angie's team and even I mean I was sort of working off the assumption that Ayuri McGregor probably would play. But even if he didn't, I was still fairly confident in the side. Um, but. That all happens, and then you go into the game. There's, um, I think the Green Brigade had to march up to the game and things like that, and it just sort of kept building. And then once you get into the ground, it was it was very much the same. Like even just doing the warm up and stuff like that, it was you just get a sense that it, it was it was going to be a good day. Um, and then 
to a man for the first minute. Uh, that, that 11 that started the game were exceptional. Um, I thought I crossed the board for um, Jack and Marcus up top. Guy that's had a hard time, Greg Taylor, another one who's had a hard time. Both of them, I, they were outstanding. McGregor, Hattati, the, the whole team, absolutely every single person in that team done their part. Um, they worked their fucking balls off for each other. They really did. I thought, I, I, I was struggling to even pick a man of the match. Um at that point, I, I thought it was quite difficult to actually pick one out of the full team. Um, and, and you really, I think you could have probably made an argument for for the vast majority of them. I don't really think you could have, you could have disagreed with it, with anybody picking somebody out that was that was different. For Ankit Gore, obviously, he get he get two goals, and and, and I will come on to him in a wee second. But but you look at the shift Juranovic put in, like Kent get Kent just wanted off that park. Um, Barisic just chucked it within the first five ten minutes. Barisic just it, it chucked it. Um, I think they made about three subs at half time. That, that tells you absolutely everything you need to know. That they knew they were beat. I mean, not if not for McGregor uh, making a couple of good saves, but he always does that, right? But if not for him making a couple of good saves, it could have been fucking five or six getting into a break. Um, but Barisic wanted fucking nothing to do with anything happening on that park and. Listen, we've said that everybody said that about the COVID football players, and listen, that's, that's exactly what they are. They, they are ball merchants. They've admitted it countless times. To having us fucking come out and say that in our interviews, like, like we knew that. We just know that we had to get to a point where we ramped the pressure up, go in their faces, and you seen what happened. Um, I, I've got no doubt in my mind. That even if we were in there, and somehow they got to half time at now, now uh, we would have came out in the second half with the same sort of tenacity we did in the first, and. I think that there's, to be honest, throughout the whole game, we showcased everything about our squad. There was part spells where we were just dominant, absolutely dominant on the ball, controlled the game. There was spells where you see the sort of the counter attacking um, element to the team and, and how pacey we can be on the break. And then you seen a solid defensive performance at times. Anything, listen, I think we, we limited them quite well to not having really many shots on target. Any. Any of the world was sort of shots to nothing. Like Kent was just cutting in and just having a pop because he had nothing. But I think that says me about the defensive side of the game and, and, and the players that were there that they really did just limit them to absolutely nothing. Um, but Hatati's just... I'm still trying to work out what, what's his preferred foot. Like he's, he put that ball in um, for the third goal, for a bad. He's put that in his left foot. The ball's just... He's let the ball come across him and just scooped it in a danger area that's like exactly where you would want the ball. And then again, you've got his first and second goal. He's, he's hit it with his right foot. Um, first one, he's brought it down with the left. Like he's so comfortable. And he look, he's just one of the players that he looks as if he's got all the time in the world on the ball. But he, he, that's the, uh, he don't, but he, he just, he's got that look about him and, and that way about him. And it takes a very special player to have that, um, especially up here and especially in a game like that where it is played on a while in a bit. He looks as if he's got all the time he wants. It's, it's almost in slow motion at times. Um, but he is it's, it's legalised robbery, what we've done. Um, for, for players like him, just, just taking them for so cheap. But it's, it's amazing that there's a market out there that just wants to get in tapped into. Um, so just huge fucking... It's just shows you that like, putting faith in a guy for our end of the world and now we're reaping the benefits for it. But... I thought it was just an outstanding performance all round. It really summed up and showed how far we've actually came for the last season. For me, Tony, uh, there was doubts. Listen, we, even we all try and be as optimistic as we possibly can, but I can't emphasise how big a task Postecoglou had when he came in. Look, you were losing your best player in Eddie. You were losing. Um, look, Foster was away. And, didn't have a, did, really didn't have a keeper um, that we trust, and then you're losing Christie and, and Sham is away. Like, the squad really was that was in a fucking terrible state last season, but it doesn't help when you go lose loads of players. And then manager goes out, and it's uh, there's such a big job that he had on there. But on that performance yesterday, you'd watch that and think that team has been together for two or three years, constantly building. But it's no, this is only him. He's not even had a full year on the job, and this is what he's doing with a team but I, it just gets me excited to think about how far can he actually take them how far can we really go with this team because 
they're only going to improve. These Jets actually have a proper year. I says like his, his complete stamp on this team now. There's still like a couple of fringe players and things who are so who are nearly his players and who no doubt at some stage will be moved on for for a Postacoglu type player. But this is really just the start, and I think that's what you're seeing. And it, it just summed it up for me that like they were beat. They do. They were beat. Even their fans are. They've all chucked it now. Um, they've already all turned their manager knowing that they've just made a complete asset. We've stuck ourselves to the league and, and put ourselves in control. This is it now. Like, we're at the point now where what happens in this league title race is in our hands. It doesn't matter about anybody else. It's completely in our hands now. And on what i seen yesterday, I've got no doubt in my mind that this team can go and clean up the title. I really do believe that we'll go and play the MNR twice and we'll beat them twice, Tony. There's, there's no doubt in my mind about that anymore. That's <laughs> a big shout. I mean, I think for me, I think they'd won six at the last seven, and we, we, the longer that was going on, really could have been massively damaging. But it wasn't the fact that we beat them, we battered them. Um, we gave them a massive showing up. Um, their best players look distinctly average. So for me, um, I think that we, we can, of course, win um, the, or the rest of the games. I don't think we will. We, we probably will drop points. But um, for me, Darry, Sunday is just as important as last night. If we can go four points ahead after Rangers being, I think they were six points ahead two weeks ago, and they then need to play Hearts at Ibrox, which probably won't be an easy game. If we, we need to win and really crank up the pressure because if Hearts can sit in, and cause a bit of frustration, uh, they could lose the rag. That's it, the pressure. As soon as they dropped points on Saturday at Ross County, the pressure swung for us to them. So now they're going in, they could be four behind. Do you say they were six clear 10, 15 days ago? Which had a 10 point swing, and you know, they've only really, they've only lost the one game. So obviously they've dropped points in the other couple, but. If they, we we beat Motherwell on Saturday, I can see them dropping points, and we just need to keep putting the pressure on those, putting the pressure back onto them. It's on them. You know, we went through a stage where we were playing every week. We played after them, you know, so we were like four behind, but we we're constantly we were effectively seven behind because we were playing after them every week. So just you know, great guts and team spirit for us to keep going and put ourselves in the position that we put ourselves in. You know, and think about it, we're a missed penalty against Livingston and, you know, a better performance away to St Mirren away for being, you know, about five clear now for a chance to go eight. So we, we just need to keep them at weird then. Motherwell's huge, massive on Sunday. You need to beat them. You need to go home with it and, you know, don't don't let that be the only highlight of our season, you know what I mean? We need to keep going. We've won a cup. We're still in Europe. We've beat, beat them to go to the league. Obviously, it's a lot more special when you beat them to go to the league, but, you know, back to the day job as it is, and Sunday, just go right at Motherwell. Uh, you know, we've played twice against Motherwell this year. We've played quite well against them both times. We've comfortably beat them. Make it three in a row against them and just, you know, put the pressure on them because it... Quarter to three, three o'clock Sunday, you know, all I should be going for far part to, to Ibrooks and thinking, right, you know, they, they know they need to fucking keep keep up with us now. And let's see let's see if they can do it because I thought since Van Bronckhorst came in, I think they've started hearts should have got a, at least a point after my time cast. So Hibs were unlucky, you know, to get a draw after them. Um then we didn't when we were all out, then the United were about sixty sixty one to beat them. We all, you know, Took them what eighty fourth minute penalty to beat them United. They've been stuttering the whole time. They're out, obviously they get put out of the cup, and you just watch them and you think they're poor. And we we know we're very good. And today we we done last night should put doubt in their minds that you know they'll make out that they played well in the second half and Ryan Jack was the best player in the part and this and that. You know they're hanging on. You know that's how desperate they are. They're hanging on to stuff, but. It just puts so much pressure on them. It's like roles have reversed from the other week. Do you know what I mean? Like there, think about it on Saturday, right? We are four points behind. They are a minute away from making it seven. 
Oh yeah, sudden it's five, but we can make it a two, and then we score in the last minute. It's two points. We've got a chance to go top on the Wednesday. They just swung Everton to them, and if that's how they deal with pressure last night, then looking forward, you'd need to, you'd need to hope that there's. I, th- I agree with you. I think we'll drop points along the way as well. But watching them, you think even with a superstar global phenomenon that they signed the other day that's not played since Bonfire Night, like, you'd even need to think that. They'll drop me. They'll drop me points on us. For me, a big thing as well is, <clears throat> and I've always, um, I've said this for quite a while. I don't think the fans expected a title race. Um, it's the equivalent after the invincible season that come February, Pedro Cixina was to beat Brendan Rodgers three 0 to go top of the league. That would be unthinkable for us. That would gob us because you were you were expecting a, they were expecting a treble. Um, and um, as we've said before, everything that's happened this season has not really went their way. Gerard was never meant to leave. Ange was meant to get sacked. Murnay went to win the League Cup. Kyogo, the Japanese players, you know, the new signings been so um, impactful. So I think um, I think there's so much pressure on them. They're still expected to win this league. They they were invincible champions last year. We were fucking nowhere near it. I mean, according to them, Ange was Ange post an clue and all this shit. So, for us, it's, it's really a case of getting to the next game and let's it's really let's if we, if we see if we could go to Motherwell and really comfortably win, I think that would that would cause a lot of a, a worry before they even kick a ball. So, there's big pressure on them. For us, it's a case of consistency. There's 14 games left. We need to try and win all of them. We've got a few hard ones coming up. Motherwell's the first, then away to Aberdeen. But with the team we've got, we're more than capable of beating uh, every team in Scotland, as yesterday proved. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm still quite relaxed. I I don't think the league title's done. Um, I I, I wouldn't have thought it was done if we lost. I I still think we've done really well at hanging in there. Ross says if we could get to January, only six behind, and then get reinforcements... Um, then we would burn a shout and it's been such a quick turnaround it's just a case now of getting Kyogo back, getting Rogic back Turnbull and really using the squad as, as we compete for in, in three competitions so um, it's, it's just exciting I, I think that's another point Dan that people forgot, we were arguably missing our best player last night I definitely, Kyogo had been so key to everything we'd done in the first half of the season like, and he became a sort of sensation and uh, to be missing him was obviously a massive blow, I know a lot of people were a bit sceptical about how injured he was and uh, some daft bald pundits for Clyde that failed to speak proper English who uh, were demanding to know at half eight in the morning how fit Kyogo was because I think everybody sort of thought that Ange was just going to pull him out last night but I think now you're seeing that it clearly was a serious injury and eh, he's still going to be a few weeks away according to Ange and the team have responded so well to it like you've had people like Jackie Marcus who's stepped up Maeda's came in and started eh, started very well and Rio Hitati of course so I think and even the players that are there that everybody sort of took their opportunity like uh, of course we've dropped points uh, at home to Levy and at home to Dundee United but if you look back to when we lost in September to Levy like ever since then we've sort of kept, kept the heat down focused on ourselves took it a game at a time and now we're on a seriously impressive run in terms of an unbeaten run in the league and it's to do that with the amount of injuries we've had, like you've mentioned, Kyogo, but you've, you're also missing, like, Christopher Julian's arguably going to uh, go back into the centre half pair. And what if he gets fully fit? Like, well, even if he isn't, he's a great option to have. We've been missing him. Like, we've had no end of problems in terms of wingers and stuff. Uh, but I, I think it's all important about how, how we just go from here because I, I think the squad depth we've got now will stand up and see us through this next free period because games come fitting fast as you mentioned you've got the two tricky away games against Motherwell and Aberdeen and then you've got a cup game against Rafe Rovers and then you're back to European action against Bodo and everybody that is available is going to have to stand up and be counted and I think that the way this team is playing the players that are only starting will be desperate to take their chance when they get it and there ultimately will be a bit of rotation in the team and 
when Keogh goes back, you, you can only think that it'll be even more an uphill task for teams that are chasing us and teams that come up against us to try and break us down because eh, every time Keogh goes come back for the injury, I know he came off against it Johnson, but you look at like, the cup final and that when he was just back, he he's just like, sort of instantly effective most of the time. And I think the fact that we play first on Sunday is massive in terms of letting us build that four point gap and put massive pressure on them but I think you've seen on the Celtic way and the Kerrydale suite and pub front run about Celtic Park when Ross County equalised the the last thing you want to do is sort of like obviously the last night won't, won't count for nothing but if you drop points to Mullerwell and give them the chance to go back top like you don't want them getting into Ibrox at four o'clock or whenever the game is buzzing and uh, let the team knowing that we've dropped points because although there'll still be a long way to go it does sort of let them off the hook and we waited two years to beat them and it, it should never be that no matter what guys Rangers turn up in it, it should never take us two years to uh, get a victory of them and I think the Motherwell game's absolutely massive and I know Motherwell have been pretty poor recently uh, they relied on a last minute equaliser at St Mern last night but I mean, we drew it some months, so I don't know how much you can read into that, but it's that first part, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a physical game, a tough game, and teams always up their game against Celtic when they come to town, so it's it's vital that I know I think the players are off the day, so it's just as long, enjoy the rest of the day and just back to business tomorrow as much as the fans will watch the highlights and the goals for days and weeks and years. Like The players need to sort of get it out of their mind and just get all eyes on Motherwell and just get the job done. The good thing is I don't see Ange um, giving players a week after they get pissed, so I think for him he'll be very much already planning for Motherwell, um, which is ideal. As he says, for us we can watch the highlights of these games for years and the fans can be full of bravado, but um, the team still have a lot of work to do. And As he says, you don't want to give them any impetus whatsoever. They gave it to us on Saturday, we took advantage, so we can't... We can't undo our hard work so soon, but um, I'm looking forward to Sunday. It's going to be a, another good test, and it'll be interesting to see who plays. Um, Andy, would you go for the same team against Mullerwell? Uh, I would assume. I would assume he probably will. Um, I mean, maybe Maida coming in, but even at that, I thought, I thought Jack Mack has played well. I think it'd be harsh to drop him out, so um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the same team again. Um, Rogic will be back today, so Maybe he could come in. Um, but again, I thought O'Reilly's been been brilliant since he since he signed in the games that he's played. Um, it's a perfect timing, really, to be honest. That obviously Rogic was away on international duty. Otherwise, O'Reilly might have to sort of bide his time and things like that. It's, it's one of the. Um, but I, I would suspect they probably will, or as close to it, unless there's, there is maybe a wee niggle here or there or anything's picked up in training and things like that I would suspect he probably will go the same team and I'd, I'd completely agree with that to be honest with you um, and you've got the options of Rogic Maida and things like that on the bench um, who they'll feature anyway but good options they have if, if maybe the game isn't as sort of straightforward as we would hope um, to be fair but it's I don't know what he'd done against United where he, he brought scales in a left back and brought Ralston in a right back. I, 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 we just didn't look as comfy. Um, again, you're, so both players were um, a downgrade really. They're, they're not as good as the, the starting the starting players in either, either position. So that was that was natural. But um, I, I thought that was a big part of, sort of where we struggled um, to sort of break down the United down at times and, and sort of create as many as many clear cut opportunities. Because uh, obviously we, there's a lot of emphasis played, sort of placed on our fullback, so it's important. Um, so hopefully they don't change. I'd, I'd like to see them just stay as they are. Um, I know Taylor was was doing during the game. I've I've not heard any update. Um, if it was anything too serious, I don't think it was, but hopefully not. Um, but aside from that, I'd, I'd, I'd keep it as, as as similar as as possible, unless there is any niggles. Um, with maybe the exception being if Maeda does come in, and you might even see him out wide or something for a badder. Um, but no, I'd keep it as close as possible. Dad, would you make any changes for Motherwell? Uh, as much as it would be pretty harsh on whoever dropped out, I, I wouldn't be disappointed to see Tom Rogic back in the team. He's He's been superb this season and 
Uh, I know it, it probably would be O'Reilly who dropped out if we do drop one, which is a shame because O'Reilly started fantastically and it reminds me of Rogic in a lot of ways, so I'll be, I, I think I'll be happy to see Rogic on the training field and uh, O'Reilly with him because I'm sure he'll learn a lot from him, but Rogic was, it's not as if he was out of the team uh, by his own fault, it's not as he didn't get suspended, he didn't lose form, he, he just got picked for international uh, duty, which unfortunately came during a busy period of the games for us, but if Rogic is back and he's back in training, I assume tomorrow with the rest of the team, I've got no problem putting Rogic back in, I don't think you can uh, really argue that, I know people will say, oh, go to the same team like they deserve it after that performance but I think Rogic might be the sort of exception to that and that, look, we've got big games coming up all the time if he uh, plays Sunday then you might see changes for Aberdeen or you'd get the cup game the week after but Tom Rogic I'd, I'd probably, I wouldn't be disappointed to see him brought in uh, I think Andy makes a good point as well about Jack and Marcus I, I'd like to see him probably kept in the team but again if Maida comes in and uh, he's in from the start, then I've, I've not got a problem with that either. Like I think for much along the same reasons that I said for Rogic, he, he was not at the team by his own fault. So uh, if the manager wants to make these changes, I wouldn't have a problem with it. So but I think unless there's any injuries, it would be Maida and Rogic possibly that I'd bring back in, Tony. Danny, would you agree with Dan? Would you bring Rogic back in for Milner? Um, I don't think so. I, I think I would keep the same team if possible. Um, I do think O'Reilly um, might need a wee bit of rest. I don't know. I looked a wee bit dreaded after about 80 minutes last night. I, but I think if, I thought he, I thought him and Jaravich were above anything else on the park. I've probably said on here, but um, I thought they two were great. Look, Motherwell, it's difficult. You don't want to throw away all that momentum because... Um, uh, I'd like to see Maeda come back in uh, if Abada's no fit, but if, if Abada's fit, I'd go with the same team it started. <sighs> McGregor might, don't know if McGregor, I, I, I mean, I'd assume if he was, if he, he'll keep playing if he's no fit, but I think maybe, you know, remember we won the cup and then Q will go fail at the next game. I don't know maybe if that'll happen with McGregor, but. I wouldn't make too many changes because we don't want to pass up this momentum that we've got now. We've got a chance to really stride on and go and make it another memorable season for us. So I would hate to think that he would make too many changes to maybe put that in jeopardy. I, I would try and keep it as similar as possible. To go, don't be bang. If people are wanting a rest, then that's what the squad's for. and <laughs> The games are going to come thick and fast, so it wouldn't bother me if we... We changed it up and brought in Rogic and Maida. That's a good thing. We can now replace quality with quality, which is crucial. Um, I think we'll just go on to predictions. Um, right, Danny, will come back to you. What's your prediction? I think we'll win 3 nothing again. And I think Yaki Marcus will get a couple of goals this time. I think he was due a couple of goals last night. I thought he was brilliant last night. Um, said it, you know, just I know you went for a prediction, but I've not said this yet. I think... We never laid a glove on Rangers last year in any of the meetings that we played them in. And to have somebody up there who gave us a focal point, who bullied their two centre halves out of the game and uh, let our whole team get 34 yards up the park was, you know, he deserved a goal. Nobody else in that park deserved a goal there. Um, and he'll get his reward. He'll score two on Sunday and O'Reilly will get his first goal with a curling effort outside the box. Andy, prediction? Uh... I think 3-0 it'll be uh, I, think, I think we will keep the momentum going I actually ag- agree with um, what Danny said about McGregor it wouldn't entirely surprise me to see him drop out um, just to sort of ADC, his AD's recovery um, or even to sort of put him on the bench and I don't know put O'Reilly and Hattati in the middle with Rogic um, and maybe try that that wouldn't entirely surprise me um, but listen McGregor's up for it and Wants to go again and hundred percent. He's a captain and he's one of the best players in the team. Um, but I got to go three 0 Say like, um, I reckon Jack Marcus gets a goal and also right May that gets a goal and I don't know whoever gets the third to be a Juranovic penalty. Darren, prediction, please. Uh, as I said, I think I think the Motherwell are in a better state at the moment and I think Celtic will take full advantage and win four 0 I think that. 
the momentum will just carry on. You've always got uh, the backing of the away support that never lets the fans down. And uh, I, I just think once we get the first, we'll, we'll sort of be game over. And I think Maida will start. And I think he'll be on the score sheet along with Cameron Carter Vickers, Juranovic, and Tom Rogic. That's my prediction. I'm going to go with the other two. I think we'll win 3 0. Um, I think it's so, so, so important that we. We put Motherwell to the sword and tick off another game with three points. Um, I'll go for, you know, I'm going to go for Vickers to get a goal. We're well overdue a centre half um, rising and scoring for a corner, um, and then I'll go for Jota to get a double. So uh, really looking forward to it. Hope everybody has listened. I know he's have listened to us for for over two years. A lot of it's been moaning and groaning and shouting and bawling, but um, I hope you're enjoying the happier episodes. I hope he's in a a great night last night. There was a few people I met that listened, so thanks very much. And um, aye, up the fucking good guys. Bye.